Good morning. This is I'm Ian UMC and we're still online and we just want to welcome you. It is Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day to each one of you. And you know, I always thought it was great to be to receive Valentine's cards and I love that stuff that happened at school when you had your Valentine box and you always just hope that maybe that special person is just like a Charlie Brown movie would uh, put that Valentine in your box. But anyway, it was great fun and as a as a child, and, and I think I always just kind of like that whole thing about love. You know, love that will keep us together. And I think that the greatest Valentine you will ever receive comes from God. Because God declares his love for each one of us. And if he could send you the biggest valentine in the world, you would receive it. And you've already received it because he sent his son, Jesus Christ. Out of this amazing love for each one of us. And indeed, that love that, we, that God gives to us, that we can have in the ways that we can love, helps keep us together. Love. Love will keep us together. This morning, not only is it Valentine's Day, but it's also Transfiguration Sunday, which we're going to hear more about in the Gospel reading this morning. So as you center your hearts, hear these words from the Psalm 50. The God of gods, it's God, speaks out, shouts, earth, welcomes the sun in the east, farewells the disappearing sun in the west. From the dazzle of Zion, God blazes into view. Our God makes his presence, his entrance. He's not shy in his coming. Starbursts, the fireworks precede him. Hallelujah, as we center our hearts this morning in listening to the prelude. Let us be in that attitude of praise.
that you join this morning as we sing together. Holy, 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 it is good that we remember who God is, for God is holy. He is holy. He deserves our praises the first thing in the morning. He deserves our praises all day through. Changing our grumbling into praising and thanksgiving, how the world takes on a different view. Let us sing from the bottom of our hearts. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall situation of the week has been, you deserve our praise. Lord God, may we spend more time praising you than we spend finding fault. May we spend more time praising you and giving you the glory 
then we judge others. My God, you deserve our praise, and as we lift our voices to you, as we lift our praises to you, our very lives change. It is right and good to praise you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to be with us. And indeed, fairest is Jesus. Oh, my. 
hope that you've had a good week. I hope that you have much to give God thanks for this week. And even if your week has been horrible, which I hope that is not the case, I still hope that you find the blessings that the Lord gives. I hope that you focus on that and that you look around to see where you see God moving, where you hear God speaking, knowing that God did not forsake you or leave you, but he is right beside you. Let us pray. Our God, you are my soul's glory, joy, and crown. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your love that is indeed amazing love. That you give us the big, biggest valentine ever that says, I love you. I love you and you call us by name. It says in Psalm 139 that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Max Lucado writes that if God had a refrigerator, our picture would be on it. Our picture. God loves us so much. Never doubt that you are loved. Know that the Lord God loves you with everything he has. That he gave his one and only son. For God so loved the world. To die on a cross. So that we might have life. We might have forgiveness of sins. He paid the price for us. There is no greater love. He knows our names. He knows our hearts. He knows who we are. He knows our struggles. He knows the places that we just desperately need him. So I pray that you call on him today. That you call on his holy name. That you call on the name of Jesus. I speak Jesus' name over each one of you. Each one of us needs that extra hug, that extra love that only the Lord can give. He gives us the biggest hugs, the biggest amount of love that we could ever know. My soul's glory, joy, and crown. It's the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that we are loved. Even when we don't think we are, we are. You love us with the greatest love that ever will be. Lord, touch those who are feeling just at despair this morning, that are feeling lonely, that are feeling forsaken. Touch them. May they feel your presence. May they feel the warmth of the air that you breathe into us. May they know how much they are cared for and loved. And Lord God, may we be in awe as we read the scripture this morning of what transpires. How there's a glimpse of your glory that is seen by those certain disciples as you are transfigured. My God, you're an amazing God. We just give you thanks. When we continue to pray for those that are struggling, we continue to pray for this nation and our world. We continue to pray for the, against the ugliness that we see around us. May we give something different, God. May we not live as the world lives, but we, may we live as children of God, children of the King who are givers of love, who are those who give thanks and praise your holy name. May we turn our, our stuff into you, God. May we turn in what we want. In our grumbling and our complaining, may we give it to you. And instead, turn it into thanksgiving and praise so that our lives are beacons of light for you in the world that is so dark. There are so many that need to know you, Jesus. May those of us who already know you bear your light, bear your love. And may we remember that you provide everything for us. 
You taught the disciples how to pray. You teach us how to pray. And we pray together this morning, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not, O Lord, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. is a great song about just remembering that we need to love one another for God is love we can love because God is love 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 one another love one another for God is love God is love. Anyone who does not give love does not know God. Yet anyone who extends his grace is a child of the Father. Love, love, love one another. God is love. Love, love, love one another. Love one another, for God is love. Oh, my, may it be that we love one another. For you are love. You have given us love, and therefore we can love. Oh, and may we be special Valentines to strangers today. May we give that love in a smile or a helpful hand. May we show love to those that maybe we haven't agreed with. May we give love, Lord. May we be continually givers of love. So this world will know there is love. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us, love, love. Love one another, love one another, for God you are love. Help us love, love, love one another, love one another, for God you are love. Hallelujah. That's just, I hope that catches in your mind, in your spirit. So you just go around singing, love, love, love one another. That would, be a, that would be a good thing for us to just have in our spirits to sing. And so, this morning as we, um, as we look at the gospel lesson, we're going to encounter um, some interesting things that we, we know like, that come on this particular Sunday of Transfiguration and um, in the Gospel of Matthew. So I want you to hear these words this morning coming out of 1 Matthew 16. Then Jesus went to work on his disciples. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. We've read this different times and it is so important that we allow Jesus to lead our lives. We don't try to do it, we give it to him. Because it says in the scripture, you are not in the driver's seat I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to finding yourself, your true self. What kind of deal is it to get everything you want but lose yourself? What could you ever trade your soul for? Don't be in such a hurry to go into business for yourself. Before you know it, the Son of Man will arrive with all the splendor of his Father. 
accompanied by an army of angels. You'll get everything you have coming to you, a personal gift. This isn't pie in the sky by and by. Some of you standing here are going to see it take place. See the Son of Man in kingdom glory. Six days later, three of them saw that glory. Jesus took Peter and the brothers, James and John, and led them up a high mountain. His appearance changed from the inside out, right before their eyes. Sunlight poured from his face. His clothes were filled with light. Then they realized that Moses and Elijah were also there in deep conversation with him. Peter broke in, Master, this is a great moment. What would you think if I built three memorials right here on the mountain? One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. While he was going on like this, babbling, a light radiant cloud enveloped them, and sounding from the deep in the from deep in the cloud, a voice. This is my son, marked by my love, focus of my delight. Listen to him. When the disciples heard it, they fell flat on their faces, scared to death. But Jesus came over them and touched them. Don't be afraid. When they opened their eyes and looked around, all they saw was Jesus, only Jesus. Coming down from the mountain, Jesus swore them to secrecy. Don't breathe a word of what you've seen. After the Son of Man is raised from the dead, you are free to talk. The disciples, meanwhile, were asking questions. Why do the religion scholars say that Elijah has to come first? Jesus answered, Elijah does come and get everything ready. I'm telling you, Elijah has already come, but they didn't know him when they saw him. They treated him like dirt, the same way they were about to treat the Son of Man. That's when the disciples realized that all along he had been talking about John the Baptizer. Thanks be to God for his word this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we're going to be talking about listening. Listening to God. It's such an important thing, and maybe you, you're thinking, uh, God's not talking to me. I haven't heard God talking to me. When does God speak to me? But actually, God does speak to us. And there's ways that we can... Um, grow in that space where we hear from God and when we hear from the Word. And so <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit about that today, about listening to God. Listening. What an experience the disciples had as they went up with Jesus and they were enveloped in this, this cloud and they saw his, he, Him change before their very eyes. They heard. They heard. They heard voices of Elijah and Moses. What an experience. What an experience. And it said they fell flat on their faces. They were scared. Things that were happening were not normal things. You and I probably would be a little scared as well. This isn't the normal everyday stuff that you run into. But they were with the king. They were with Jesus. It is not surprising that they had things that were not of normal happening Jesus, God, was with them. And they saw a glimpse of the glory of God. They saw a glimpse of Jesus in his glory as he just became this whiter than white, translucent, just kind of just became this, this person who was so, so very white and radiant. And they saw this. And it was like sunlight was pouring, the scripture said, sunlight was pouring from his face. It was like that. His clothes were filled with light. It was an unbelievable time. And then can you imagine how it would be as you're coming down the hill and you just want to tell everybody. You want to tell the other disciples. You want to tell everybody what has just happened. What you just saw and Jesus says, mm -mm, don't tell yet. Wait wait until the resurrection. He's foretelling what's going to happen in the future. Wait. How hard would it be to wait when you've just been in this experience that is breathtaking? Jesus tells them, you have to wait. Wait. 
And so how is it we listen to the voice of God? How do we hear from God? We can hear from God in our prayers, but that means that our prayers have to sometimes have silence in them so that in that quiet time, God can speak back to us. You may even want to jot down some of your, your thoughts as, as you're feeling them, as you're praying. You might want to jot those down. Is this God speaking to you? Are you hearing from God? Those are, that's through our prayer life, we can hear from God as we walk or as we are praying in the stillness, wherever our pray, prayer spot might be. We can listen in the scriptures to what the Lord is saying. Sometimes we will, we will happen upon a scripture, and maybe it's in our devotions or reading of the Bible that is just as if it's drawn right out for us on that particular day. The Lord has spoke to us through his scriptures. That's why memorizing this, the scriptures and knowing them is such a good thing because can, we can speak them. We can speak them. We can pray them back to God. And that can help us. You know, knowing, knowing some of those scriptures can help us. Listening for the word of God. Listening in your spirit. Listening. What does God have to say? Putting things to to prayer and, and waiting and seeing what the Lord has to say about them. And then we let certain things guide us. We let love and in, in our loyalty, our trust, our belief in God to guide us, to direct us. We allow, we trust the Lord to be in the driver's seat of our life. It means we move over and let the Lord be there. That's not always easy. That's sometimes really, really hard. But he said, you know, you've got to let me lead. you got to let me be in the driver's seat to give that up and give it to Jesus. It says to run away from evil. When there are things that are not good, run the other direction from them. Run towards God. Run away from evil. That includes things that we have thoughts in our minds, hanging around with people that are speaking negative stuff. We may have to just excuse ourselves. It may not be that we um, don't like them anymore. That's not what I'm telling you. We still love them. But we may need to just get out of that environment of the negativity. We may need to move ourselves and run towards God. And so it's just a reminder. We may need to be that changer of the subject of, of changing to something more positive to change the climate of the space we are in, if we can do that. And then we are supposed to be givers, givers from our very heart in, in generosity to be, to be givers, to be givers and, and not, not to process it, just be givers. You know, if the Lord kind of lends you and pushes you to do something, most likely that is the Lord who wants you to do it. You know, and so just do it. Allow the Lord to guide and direct and, and don't worry. You know, if you give from your heart and you give and you're generous and you give from your heart, anything that is didn't deserve that giving, is it doesn't matter. God will take care of that. That's not our worry. You give when you know it. You believe it's right and you give to others and you help them. And and you let God take care of anything else. This is, this is what we're to be. We're supposed to be givers and, and people who give um, out of generosity and give generously, not out of give. We should be givers that give generously. And that reminder that we've already talked about, about letting um, the Lord be in the driver's seat of our life, you have to do that often. You have to give up whoops, I'm back in the driver's seat. I really didn't want to be in the driver's seat. I think you can do it better, Lord. Got to let him lead. And so if he's leading, it may go, it, it may take us in a different direction that we weren't anticipating, that we weren't planning on going, but he leads us in the way that we can fulfill our greatest potential in the, for the Lord, for the kingdom. Allow the Lord to lead in your life. And then you deny yourself and you take up your cross and you follow the Lord, denying ourselves. 
Denying ourselves means that it's not all about me. It is not all about what we want and what we like and how we want things to be. It's just getting rid of that. Getting rid of that and looking towards the Lord and looking towards what the Lord would have and seeing if if what we have put first and foremost is the most important. Have we put the Lord first and foremost or have we put other stuff first and foremost? We need to just let that other stuff go. Deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Jesus. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Doesn't mean that the road isn't going to be bumpy. Doesn't mean that it's not going to be hard. It doesn't mean that it will always be the way we want it. But it does mean that we are following the one who will lead us on the right path, the straight path, the narrow path, the one who will lead us correctly. And in the end, it will be the best way. It will be the best way. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. Be faithful to worship God, to praise God, to give thanks to God. The praises and singing praises and praising God. You know, I got to tell you, the enemy does not like that. Satan's still about to cause as much trouble as possible. Doesn't win. Nevertheless, he's about but boy, doesn't survive well in our praises, our true praises and our worship of God. There's no place for him in those places. And so make sure you're worshiping and praising God and giving thanksgiving. Find things. You don't have to look far. Notice. Look around. Notice what God is doing. Worship the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and your mind. And listen Listen for God throughout your life. It's important that we, we, are, we, we expect to hear from God. You know, when I pray, I expect that God is going to answer. He may not answer right this second. He may not answer tomorrow. But I expect that God will, will hear my prayers and that God will answer. And I need to be looking for that and listening and seeing. And sometimes... You know, it comes in the Word. Sometimes it's a still, small voice. But we need to be in expectation that, that God wants to have a conversation with us. God wants to speak to us. And then there's a scripture that reminds us not to lean on our own understandings, but trust the Lord God. Don't, don't trust just what you think you know or what you think you figured out, but trust God. Lean on the, His understandings, not our own. We give those up. We give those up so that we, we are wanting the understandings of the Lord. Listen to God. Listen. There's a lot of chaos in our world. There's a lot of stuff. Man, and there's gadgets that we can plug into and we can hear anything we want to hear. We can see things that we maybe don't want to see. It, we can get flooded with opinions and, and ideas and all sorts of things. Sometimes you need to shut those things off. Maybe often you should shut those things off and put them in a corner somewhere. Or find, put on them things that can help you. You know, put on the Bible app. Find a devotion and even it will speak it to you. What an awesome thing that is. Mark and I are, I think I've already mentioned, are, are doing the reading the Bible through in, in a year and um, with Nikki Gumbel, who is, is, the, is the one that is doing this particular. There's all sorts of read the Bible through in a year. But it's been delightful. Uh, I love his heart for, for the Lord, and I love how he, he gives the devotions. And... Um, it's very meaningful and he puts everything it has a kind of has a topic for each day and um, all the scriptures align with that and there are times that in the scriptures you'll see that the most faithful will be crying out to God crying out to God Lord God why please put an end to this to the suffering but they are still faithful and still trust 
in my devotions, I've been reading through Job, and Job, Job's life is hard. He's been faithful to God, but it's hard. His life is hard. He's wondering about why he even wants to live anymore. God has promised him things, but he's lost everything at the moment. His health, his, his family, he's, he's struggling. But he stays faithful to God, who he believes in. So I want to encourage you that we want, last week we talked about reaching our full potential, God potential, reaching our full God potential that God has a purpose and a plan for our life. And in order to reach that full potential, our God potential, we have to be good listeners to God. We have to put things in before God. Lord, what is it that you will have me do? This is where I'm feeling led. Is this your will? Is this mine? Give me, I give this to you. And we need to trust God to, to provide leadership and guidance for that. It's so, so important that we do that, that we listen and we pray and we, we talk to God and we put all things before him so that we can reach our full potential, our full God potential for the purposes of his kingdom on earth and in heaven. We're created with a purpose, with a God-designed purpose. And Psalm 139 says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made each one of us with a God potential, a God purpose, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't let anybody tell you you're junk because that's just absolutely not true. That is not what God says about each one of us. We may fail, we may make mistakes, but God loves us unconditionally and desires for us to walk with him, desires for us to hear his voice, desires for us to follow. May you be encouraged on this day. We're so close to the beginning of Lent. That will be this, this week on Wednesday. will be the very beginning of, of Lent, beginning with Ash Wednesday. And I just want to encourage you as you go on that journey. You're going on another journey. We've, we've been journeying a lot. It may seem like we've been in a season of Lent for a while. But Jesus walks through... 40 days of temptation, 40 days that he's tempted by the devil, not counting the, week, the Sundays, and he walks through this um, in our calendar. He walks through 40 days of in the wilderness. Satan tempts him with all sorts of stuff. I'll give you all this power, and Jesus already has all that power, but nevertheless, Satan tempts him. But Jesus often quotes the scripture back to him. This is what the word of God says. That's so another important reason why we need to know the Word of God so we can speak it back when we are being tempted, that we can speak the Word of God back for protection. Listen for God. Listen for God. Know that you are loved, that God wants to have a conversation with you, that he will walk with you and be with you if you allow that to happen. Let us pray. Lord God, we just pray that you awaken our souls this morning, that you awaken us to follow you, that you awaken our nation, that you awaken the nations of the world. There is one God. There is one Lord and Savior of the world. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your love is greater than any love that we will ever imagine, that you love us unconditionally, that you came to earth to give your life for our sins as a sacrifice for our sinful ways. Lord God, may we realize that you have a purpose for us, that you have a plan for our lives, that you want to guide us and direct us, and you will not lead us down the wrong path. You will lead us down the best path. Help us to be good listeners, Lord Jesus. Help us to be people who give love, give it away each and every day you have loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our hearts, Lord, in this nation, awakening Holy Spirit, we desire.
fire awakening for you and you alone awake my soul awake my soul and sing for the world you love your will be done let your will be done in me in your presence in your power awakening for this moment in this hour from this place know that you are unconditionally loved know that the biggest valentine ever for God so loved the world has been given to you you for he knows your name you are fearfully and wonderfully made go in that idea that God has a purpose just for you for the purpose of his kingdom go knowing that he wants to speak to you this day listen listen Find ways to listen for the voice of God to speak to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.